Chances are that everyone who's listening to this has been affected by cancer in some way. According to the American Cancer Society, more than one million people in the U.S. alone are diagnosed with cancer every year. My late wife, Jennifer, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2008. We got the news just five months after our wedding, and uh, Jen passed on December 22nd, 2011. No one thinks something like this is going to happen to them. In the blink of an eye, Jen and I went from feeling like the world was our oyster to feeling different from most everyone else in our life. Friends our age were starting a family or chasing a career. We were facing breast cancer. During the first year of our marriage, Jen had her breasts removed. She received chemotherapy and radiation treatment, and she had reconstructive surgery. Every day of that year brought new challenges, and we had to find strength we didn't know we had. We had to be patient, and we had to communicate with each other, and we had to be silly. Jen could make a clown nose look sexy. Our dream of growing old together was challenged in the first year of our marriage. Life and being alive began to take on <clears throat> a new and entirely different meaning. We started to question our priorities and how we wanted to live our life. Mortality was a real wake-up call. We learned a lot that first year about each other and about ourselves. Just after our one-year anniversary, Jen finished treatment, and we started to put our life back together. It was difficult re-entering the world post-cancer. Jen felt vulnerable, like people knew her body had been compromised. We were living in Manhattan, and before Jen was diagnosed, she had no fear of getting around the city on her own. She used to do cartwheels in the park. After treatment, Jen feared that someone might accidentally bump into her chest, so in crowded areas, I would act like a blocker to protect her. All that mattered to me was taking care of Jennifer. We promised in good times and in bad. My entire life, I've heard people say, every day is a gift. After Jen was diagnosed, this started to make a lot of sense to us. Little things, passing seconds so easily overlooked. These moments were cherished. These were the moments that got us through our worst days. Jen's cancer metastasized in 2010, and it continued to spread. Most days, Jen was in pain. And to give you an idea of how bad this pain was, uh, our doctors prescribed methadone, and Jen received that through a pick line that went into her arm and then up to a vein right above her heart so that the methadone would get there as fast as possible. And there were times when even this couldn't bring relief. And it was these times when there was nothing I could do to make Jen better that these times just, they tore me apart. Side effects were uh, getting worse with treatment and they demanded constant attention. At the age of 39, Jen relied on a walker and we often wondered what people were thinking when they stared. We spent a lot of time in the hospital but we made the most of it. We had to laugh. You know, uh, I remember sometimes when Jen was laying in bed, I would walk past the door and pretend like I was walking down an escalator. <laughs> I used to crack her up. Time was slipping away from us. Every chance for a smile or a laugh, a memory had to be taken. 
throughout our marriage, we noticed that most people, even those who were closest to us, had no idea how to act around us or how to help us. As Jen's cancer continued to spread, we started to notice a drop off in communication with family and friends. We needed their support and their understanding, so I started to photograph our life. Our hope was that sharing these photographs with our family and friends would bridge the gap in communication between our support group and us. To simplify communication, I started a Facebook page and I would post photographs and updates about Jen's treatment. Now I know social media can get a bad rap and debates rage from blogs to bars over what is and isn't appropriate to share. I've taken a few lumps from people who disagree with the decision to share our story. I've been told uh, these photographs should have been kept between you and your wife and not shared with the rest of us and this is depressing. Why do I want to look at these? And this one hit me pretty hard when I first heard it but uh, someone said that you're getting rich off of your dead wife. I get it. I know these photographs can be difficult to look at. They're emotional and at times they're frightening. They put mortality in your face. But they are real. People all over the world are facing breast cancer, any kind of cancer, any kind of trouble. Not talking about these challenges in life that are uncomfortable will not make them go away. After Jen was diagnosed, she started to search the internet. She was looking for anything she could find about breast cancer. And most everything she came across was sterile and clinical. Jen wanted to find other women with breast cancer and hear what they were saying. Women who understood what she was going through in a way that someone who hasn't had cancer can't quite grasp. I was right at Jen's side and even as her husband, as her best friend, there were things I just didn't get. Not because I wasn't trying, but because I just didn't know. Jen found great comfort attending support groups. And she wanted to share what she was learning and experiencing and feeling with whoever wanted to hear. So she started a blog. Jen's posts were open and honest, and at times they were hard as hell to read. She didn't push it on people, but if someone wanted to know, then her blog was available. Our goal with all of this was to communicate with family and friends. And we accomplished this. Jen's last days were full of love. Family and friends stop by for one last goodbye. One final I love you. And at this point, the cancer had spread to Jen's brain and during her last days, there were times when she was a little pretty out of it. But one night I asked her how she touched so many people. And without a second's thought and razor sharp, Jen said, because they touched me. After Jen passed, I kept posting photographs and sharing my thoughts. This was the worst time of my life. I, I felt like a puzzle made up of pieces that didn't make any sense. I felt broken, like, like happiness would never again be a part of my life. How could it be? In much the same way that Jen and I felt different as a young couple facing breast cancer. I was 38 years old and I owned a cemetery plot and a headstone with my and Jen's name on it. I had to get these thoughts out of my head and posting them to a blog gave me a voice. A way to start healing or trying to understand or making sense of something that makes no sense. People connected to our story and an online community, kind of a support group formed. The outpouring of encouragement and love in response to my post was incredible. And what's great about this community is that now it's turned into something that isn't just support and encouragement for me. Women with breast cancer see themselves in these photographs and they can tell their loved ones, hey look, this is the hell that I'm going through. 
I get messages from women who have scheduled a mammogram because of Jennifer. Other messages from people who have lost a spouse too. And these photographs make them feel a little less alone, like there are people out there who understand. Husbands and wives see our story and are reminded not to take each other for granted. Receiving this support and watching Jen's legacy grow into something beautiful, something that is inspiring people all over the world to embrace life. These are the reasons why I'm not a complete mess today and why happiness is starting to be a part of my life again. I miss Jennifer with every bit of my soul and there isn't a moment that goes by when I'm not thinking about her. And really, it's not even like thinking anymore. Jen is a part of everything I do. Of the many gifts Jennifer gave me, one of the greatest is that she let me make these photographs. I'd be a fool if I didn't recognize that she gave me these photographs as much as I made them. It's our story. Despite cancer and Jen's death, these photographs are about love and life. About grabbing hold of your dream and never letting go, no matter how hard life gets. Sorry, I'm wandering and wobbling like I'm drunk. I promise I haven't had anything to drink today yet. Uh, social media and technology can be incredibly overwhelming, especially if you were born in a generation before you know, digital technology really staked its claim. It seems like there's a new social network, a new device, a new something every day, and it's hard to know even where to begin. But there's something there for everyone, and my dad is a great example. Pops was born in 1928. That year, Otto Roveder invented the first mechanical bread slicer for commercial use. Yeah, I told him that and he holds it over my head already. Um, my dad's family installed their first phone line when he was a teenager. It was a four-party line, so they shared one line with three other neighborhood families, and I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how they made selfies back then. So, <laughs> I was born in 1973. That year, Martin Cooper of Motorola placed what's recognized as the first public cell phone call, and it was a call to his chief competitor at Bell Labs. <laughs> right? Friendly competition, I'm sure. I recently told my dad that my cell phone is kind of a better camera than it is a phone, and he looked at me like I was crazy. So I'm going to go on a limb because I'm pretty sure I know what you're all thinking right now. I'm just going to say it, but what an adorable baby. <laughs> I, I just want to pinch those cheeks. So I'm the youngest of 11 kids, and well, you all saw the baby picture, who are we kidding? The favorite of said 11 kids. <laughs> For years, we tried to get dad to install the internet and you could set a clock by pop saying, I don't need the stinking internet. Well, this last Christmas, we finally wore him down. And my childhood home entered the modern world. Much like we expected, dad took a liking to the internet. He looks for polka music or video clips of his favorite comedians and recipes to make dinner for mom. It amazes me to think about the spectrum of technology my dad has witnessed. From a time when he shared a phone line with three other families to a time when all it takes is a smartphone and a few seconds to make thoughts, ideas, and creations available for the world to see. I'm so glad that worked. You have no idea how nervous I was until this moment. Don't thank me. Thank Jessica and Dave and everyone who made this happen. Thank you. <laughs> the best thing about this, you know, social media, it's, it's a voice we can use to express our feelings. And without it, the chance of our story spreading the way it has would be significantly less, to say the least. So I'm not trying to be a social media lobbyist. Believe me. I don't really need to see what all of my friends are having for dinner every night. But our story is a great example of how 
content on social media can initiate dialogue and it can create a, commu a community and provide support during difficult times. And what's great about it is that you don't have to share your most personal feelings. You can share whatever you want. I just started a blog about Bubbles, my solar powered hula girl with the sweetest dance moves that for some crazy reason I'm obsessed with. And it's completely silly, but it's making people laugh. So why not share? Trying to figure out how to deliver my message to you all has been a difficult journey. As I prepared for this talk, I kept asking myself, what do I want people to walk away with? The answer I kept coming back to is something so simple. Life is precious. So I would start working on this thought and then I'd stop and think, but yeah, that's so obvious. And I didn't want to stand here and tell you all something that you already know. But then it hit me that it wasn't until Jen died that I really began to understand and embrace this. Every day is a gift. Follow your heart and let go of things. Hug your spouse. Tell your kids you love and believe in them all the time. Friends, keep in touch. Make photographs of everyone and everything in your life. <laughs> Tell people you love them, often. And if you have something to say and you believe in it, then share it. Thank you.